He came to me in dreams. He kept appearing every night. I was not sure why, until I heard his voice saying, my eight manifestations represent eight quantum energy fields. Now, go tell the world. I awoke with a start, determined to find out what these eight quantum energy fields are and how they relate to the eight manifestations of the Lotus Born Master. From 2002 to 2015, I led a series of expeditions across the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, searching for the mythical, legendary realm of Shangri-La. Now in 2018, we reassembled the Searching for Shangri-La expedition team and began the search for the Lotus-born master. The Lotus-born master was the father of Vajrayana or Tibetan Buddhism. In different languages, he is known by different names. In Sanskrit, Guru Padmasambhava. In Tibetan, Guru Rinpoche. In Chinese, Lianghua Sheng Da Shi. He lived in the 8th century and traveled across many regions of the Himalayas, where he appeared as different manifestations, leaving a legacy of legends and magic. Images of his eight manifestations are often depicted in murals, tankas, statues, and dances across the Himalayas. Each manifestation represents a different stage in his journey toward enlightenment and spreading Tibetan Buddhism across the Himalayas. Is it possible that behind each manifestation there may be a coded language revealing the laws of quantum physics? The Ngurumbuche's teaching is uh, science of the the mind. Padmasambhava was in touch with the quantum reality. He lived the quantum reality. He manifested the quantum reality. You could call him the father of quantum physics for sure. Following his handprints, footprints left across the Himalayas. We launched expeditions in five countries, crossing extreme climates, covering over 20,000 kilometers within six months. We sought the wisdom of great lamas, the research of dedicated scholars, and the science of technology innovators. Our expedition teams proved the legend to be true. In order to retrace the footsteps of the Lotus-born master, we began our expedition in Bodhanarth, Kathmandu, where we sought out the expertise of the 11th Chose Kuchin Rinpoche, a specialist on the life and times of the Lotus-born master. I think it is very auspicious that uh, today uh, our journey starts on the very, very auspicious day, which is the Guru Rinpoche's uh, birth day. Before entering into Guru Rinpoche's world, first we must know where to start, like a door. So the Bodhastupa is like the door to enter into Guru Rinpoche's world. We have to understand the cosmic power of Guru Rinpoche the cosmic principle of Guru Muche, 
through knowing the principle of Guru Rinpoche's cosmic power, cosmic energy. Now we can understand the laws of quantum physics. Padmasambhava means lotus born. According to legend, he was born on a lotus on Lake Danashka in what is today the Swat Valley of Pakistan. Swat Valley has long been the place already described by Xuanzang in the Tang Dynasty. Uh, it's the sacred place of Buddhism. It is a paradise. Udiana is Shambhara. Everybody is practicing Vajrayana. Manifesting is Bema Gyalpo, the Lotus King, the King of Odiana or Shambhala. Tang Dynasty records tell how people in Odiana recited magic charms or spells. Holding the drum for calling Dakini or feminine energy and the mirror to divine the future, the Lotus King's magnetizing energy is expressed in chanting of mantra. Mantras are the biggest part of our culture because for a common man to utter mantra, to say and focus on that mantra so the thought rate will go down plus the vibrational level effect also he gets. In ancient uh, India, people believe that um, the frequency contains very specific energy. When you say the mantra, part of your body or part of your mind is resonating with the, the, the frequency. So they create a, a, an, an even bigger energy. One of the fundamental ideas in quantum physics which is this dual nature of things. The things are waves, some kind of wave field, and particles. If we're talking about a mantra with sound that's generated by the human voice, there are different frequencies in that sound. For example, like the sound om. Om. Which is widely experienced and understood as a universal sound. It's first and foremost an energy. Everything in this world is energy. So sound also is an energy. Even as you hear the sound as I was chanting it, you could possibly feel that the sound began from a lower part of the body and then moved up and then became narrower and then ended kind of a hum which was not really here but in the head. In the case of home, it gets enforced in your head, in your brain and and all your uh, nerve endings become silent. Your whole nervous system becomes still. The energy goes up and it concentrates in the Agnya Chakra and in the Sahasrara Chakra, which is on top of the head. The working of endocrine glands, the enzymes, the secretion of the hormones depend on this. And then when in a negative person, these uh, mantra sound waves affect the brain. It secretes serotonin, which makes him peaceful, which secretes adrenaline, which makes him happy. So automatically, emotion create secret hormones and hormones create emotions. It is a cycle and sound and mantra exactly enter at a proper time at a proper this thing and change a negative person to a positive 
or a bad in a good way or a demon in a godly person. But mantra with the strong intention moves faster because intention means against your emotions and you know how emotions travel through this electromagnetic field faster than the sound waves. As an energy field, mantra contains vibrational frequency. Moreover, within the sound of each mantra is an encrypted code that represents a knowledge repository. The seat uh, syllable means a encrypted or coded message, the shortened, the simplest form of a huge paragraph, of a huge sutra. So frequency analysis was developed and perfected around, oh, around 1,200 years ago by Al-Hidi, a famous Arabic uh, mathematician, where he would apply the analysis of the letters and the substitutions to, to find weaknesses in the ciphers. So what's encrypted in it is basically that intention that comes from you're saying that mantra. If you think about encryption, it's, it's uh, basically when you think about uh, text messages, for example. I'm sending you a message from my phone, and you could be anywhere else in the world. And that information is sent from my mobile device, and it's encrypted, and it's encrypted and sent out via radio waves. Encryption is contained within this vibration. Your phone has to have the key to unlock that encryption. Even to receive frequency, you need some sort of like connection. Then, you know, the frequency is able to travel uh, efficiently and able to pass all the blessing uh, without any hindrances. The energy, you call the energy, we call that blessing, I think is, uh, is uh, something similar. Gaya. Uh, this is the most uh, central place for the, all the Buddhism, uh, Buddha's followers. For Buddhists all over the world, uh, Bodh Gaya is the most sacred spot uh, because uh, that's where you find uh, the sacred Bodhi tree under which uh, Lord Buddha uh, received his enlightenment. So Bodh Gaya has special significance uh, for the um, religion of Buddhism and uh, it is much venerated in India and across the world. So it, it's a magnet that draws uh, uh, pilgrims from all over uh, Buddhist Asia as it were uh, to uh, Bihar, that is where Bodh Gaya is located, Bihar in India. Right next to the Bodh Gaya Stupa is a cremation ground and it's amazing because you have this very spiritual, beautiful stupa and right there there is a cremation ground where it, one of the crucial moments happened for Padmasambhava. Mm -hmm. Like the Buddha before him, he decided to leave the palace and become a wandering yogi, traveling to the eight carnal grounds of India. In the cremation grounds, yogis meditated on the question of impermanence. They were communicating with spiritual energies in various stages of transition. Practicing in the place of the Kanan ground is that to communicate with the demonic spirit, subdue the, the negative energy, 
So when we talk about Nima Wurzel, Nima Wurzel is something that uh, the manifestation of uh, a very wild yogi. The Nima Wurzel is like a fearless one. So he lived with all these corpses, we live with all these zombies, skeletons, ghosts, hungry animals. There are many different kinds of meaning and the purpose of coming to Hanon ground. When you see the dead body, you are supposed to understand the impermanence of this life. In Buddhism, um, the cremation ground is often a reminder of one's, of the impermanence of life. It was not uncommon to go to the cremation ground. It's a place where you're reminded of death, um, the death of material um, goods and material things as well some energy field there and there must be a transformation which is happening there and there may be channels where the spirits or the spirit energy is then dissolved in uh, what we could call just Gaia. Part of the world is, is like we call it intermediate, intermediate world you know it's like um, between this life and next life this is a uh, like a corridor before you enter the house Manifesting as Nima Ozar, legend says the lotus-born master stopped the sun, which means concepts of time and space as we understand them do not exist. He holds the trident, a symbol of yogis meditating in the carnal ground. Added are three heads representing past, present, and future where Einstein believed that time might be curved rather than straight, the yogis of the past understood that time unfolds upon itself. It is multidimensional and entangled, allowing for the existence of parallel universes and quantum communication between them. That's where practitioners would go to connect to a different universe, a parallel universe. Well, there's a lot of theory about um, parallel universes. It might have been considered frivolous decades ago that the idea of multiple instances of what we would deem reality is becoming uh, more and more credible, um, especially amongst metaphysicists and uh, theoretical physicists. Parallel universes, yes. Uh, so Stephen Hawking, right before he died, just released a paper that is, of course, being debated now. His current theory um, is one that can be tested and used to test the possibility of the multiverse, possible universes all existing, coexisting at the same time as you and I are sitting here today, um, just next to us on, on another level. So there could be that we have different instances of what we deem as reality uh, that are coexisting. And whether there can be, this again gets in the realm of theoretical physics, ways of channeling between the one or the other uh, is also a matter of considerable uh, discussion. Um, the concept is basically we're living in one dimension. There are many of us living in different dimensions. And therefore, if we emanate the right frequency to cross dimension, we could communicate with different astral bodies or communicate with other people through time and space. It's just entering, okay, from 4D to 5D. Then our world is just a movie. Time is just a frame that we conceptualize. In deeper terms, there's no, there's no time frame. In these other universes, it's possible that time, gravity, and, and the way which we observe everything in our universe doesn't act the same way. Now, when we talk about time, the past encompasses the present, it encompasses the future. So we don't have this linear division of time where time, actual real time, is only the present. Act, uh, time is encompassing. All time coexists. All those differences coexist in that field. So time and space is our only physical constraint in this dimension. There are no time and space constraints in other dimensions.
Manifesting as Loden Chokse, the wisdom holder, the lotus born master learned from the Dakini the power of non attachment in converting negative energy to positive. In one hand, he holds the drum for summoning Dakini or feminine energy. In the other, he holds the skull cap symbolizing on attachment, the emptiness factor, allowing the mind to manage energy. So if we talk about uh, Lodin Chose, I think first we have to understand about the principle of Nima Waser. Because Nima Waser is the one who are fearless. He don't care about much about the all the humans. You know, because he was dealing with the zombies and ghosts. After the subduing the, the demonic spirit, then he knew that he need to also interact with the human beings. Then the Loden Choksi came. Loden means that his emanation of Manjushri, very sharp mind. And he can learn Tantric, Sutra, Tantric, everything. And then Loden Choksi came and he learned in different arts. Uh, then what he learned, the most interesting uh, education uh, while he was as Loden Chosi is the communication or the code word of Dakini language. Dakinis in Tibetan Khandro, in Chinese Kongshimu, means Skywalker. These are feminine Shakti energy forces that can move seamlessly through time and space. In astrophysics, they may be equated with dark matter. They are energy forces that can be called upon for good and to change circumstances from negative to positive. Dakini there was Leki Wang Wang, and she was the key, really. She's the one who taught Padmasambhava. When you go to a cremation ground, you can overcome negative energy with positive energy. <laughs> So Dagini, in uh, Tibetan Buddhism particularly, representing the emptiness uh, wisdom. It means when you're concentrating with your consciousness towards something, you're not changing the world, you're selecting the reality in which you want to get in. It's a way how you think, you know, in mind training, jealousy or anger anger that arises in you it is just a poison and it has all the negative consequences but when this moment if you can uh, apply the technique from santrayana teaching so now you have totally transformed your negative uh, energy into positive energy <laughs> Intention is really our language to talk to energy. When we have a certain intention, basically it's a really focused energy creating coherent resonance with the object that we send the intention to. It's actually pushing the energy towards it and making the whole um, environment coherent and therefore changing it. It, as, as like you how you change um, a tuning fork. So one tuning fork resonating at the same frequency with the second tuning fork with the third tuning fork basically makes all the tuning fork uh, vibrate at the same speed. Now 
the greed is very powerful. Air is polluted, water is polluted, earth is polluted. And we're talking a lot about science and quantums and physics and this and that and going to the moon and maybe going to another planet, making so many so many different type of powerful emissions and and on one hand we can say we are very civilized, twenty one century civilized. Another hand if we're not really aware about value of inner uh, goodness, like kindness, and the inner develop of wisdom and kindness, I think the world will face terrible problems. When you talk about Petma Sambhava, then it really is connected in Tibetan Buddhism. How Petma Sambhava deal it in Tibet, those local deity or oh, Maras and if we have full of anger and we hurt it, it we are Mara. And in the us, if we have full of kind, helping others, serving others, you are you are Bodhisattva, living Bodhisattva. Could very well be the father of uh, of what we regard as today as modern uh, quantum physics. I think we can say Guru Rinpoche is father of everything. <laughs> I think he represents everything, you know. Uh, he represents everything, hope, and uh, he represents joy, happiness, everything. He's a father or mother or everything. Quantum physics is probably one of the, the peripheral, uh, important uh, events of perception which are happening around us right now. So we have not invented it. it we, we, our time might just be ripe enough that we can understand it. Uh, that it was understood before, it is very likely that, again, it may be a wave of understanding and not understanding. It comes and goes. So I think now we are at a very positive wave. We have brilliant people on this planet who can see, feel, perceive, speculate about all those things without, without being uh, Persecuted. Uh, let's use the Padma Sambhava as a symbol of progress, of moving forward, of traditional ideas, of modern ideas to, to really meet climate and challenges of water crisis. But I think the biggest challenge is uh, working together, having uh, cultures that appreciate each other, uh, developing new ideas, and definitely we can look to Padma Sambhava as inspiration. <laughs> Guru Rumbuchi, Tuji Sama, Wali, Don Sede, Guru Rumbuchi, Tanamagamon, Chu to Java, then a good Peman Juni, then a Guru Rumbuchi, and Guru Sengi, then Guru Rumbuchi, with Java Jonjo, Mona Konda, the Tatin, and Guru Sengi, then a Guru Sengi, then a lodger at Mount Hadet, Soma, Beton, Bayapur, then a Sengi, Tonji, Yishi, Tosiziki, then a Beton, Bayapur.